in this question what they have said number of distinct normals that can be drawn to the ellipse having equation x square by 169 plus y square by 25 is equal to 1 from the point p 0 comma 6 okay so this what this ellipse is first of all that is the question this is a horizontal ellipse right i have my a value as 13 and b value as 5 when i compare it with the standard form clear so a is greater than b will have a horizontal ellipse like this and 0 comma 6 is going to lie outside the ellipse definitely because my extremity of minor axis the positive extremity is 0 comma 5 so my p is lying outside the ellipse clear now guys, they are asking from this point P, how many normals can be drawn? See, one case is very simple. What normal can be drawn from a point which is lying on Y axis? I have Y axis itself. This will be one normal, isn't it? This is a normal. So I have one normal, that is for sure. Let's consider some another normal is also drawn from point P and it is intersecting this ellipse at point Q. So if I get a valid coordinate of point Q, that means this will be a possibility again, right? So point Q I'm taking as my point X1 comma Y1. I have to find either X1 or Y1. How? Let's find out. How we are going to do this? From any point, let us say I have a point X1 comma Y1 on the ellipse. If I have to write equation of normal at this point, what am I going to write? What is the equation of normal formula? Well, it is, if my point is x1, y1, the equation of normal at that point is a square x by x1 minus b square y by y1 is equal to a square minus b square. You remember that, isn't it? So this is the equation of normal. I have a square, I have b square. So guys, quickly what we'll do, we'll just put my point coordinate p0, 6 in this equation. So when I do that, I'm going to get a square multiplied by 0 divided by x1 minus b square multiplied by 6 divided by y1 is equal to a square minus b square. So from here, my x1 part is cancelling out and I can say that my value of y1 will be minus of b square that is 25 into 6 divided by a square minus b square. So guys, what is 169 minus 25? Well, it is 144, isn't it? So this is 144. That means my y1 value will finally come out as minus of 25 by 24. Okay, so there will be a point lying on ellipse, that is for sure. But how many will be there? Well, if my y1 is negative, that means my point will be either in third quadrant or in fourth quadrant, isn't it? So that so that means how can you know how many normals can be drawn? Well, two. One corresponding to the third quadrant, another corresponding to the fourth quadrant. And one more was there. Which was it? Y-axis, right? So definitely there will be three normals which can be drawn from this point P0, 6. Have you understood? Very well. And if we see the options, we can say that C is going to be the right answer. Well, in this question, what they have said, if two tangents to the ellipse, which is having equation in its standard form, x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1. a is greater than b, that means it will be a horizontal ellipse. This, sorry, these tangents make angles alpha and beta with major axis. Major axis is x axis, right? Such that ten, tan alpha plus tan beta is equal to lambda, then what is the locus of their point of intersection? This is what they have asked. They have given us four options here. So guys, let's plot the figure first, isn't it? Because when we plot the figure, the question actually becomes a simple one. So what they have said here is that, let us say, we have drawn two tangents to an ellipse. These are my tangents. right and tangents are inclined at angle alpha and beta so let us say this angle will be alpha and for this tangent this angle is beta and they have a point of intersection also let's let us take this point of intersection as p so what we have to do we have to find locus of point p so point p can be taken as h comma k how are we going to do that 
Well, there is only one information known to us that is slope of tangents, isn't it? We know that tan alpha is going to be slope of first tangent, so this is m1 and tan beta is the slope of second tangent that is m2. So, slope of tangents is, I mean, sum of slope of tangents that is m1 plus m2 is equal to lambda. This is the only information which is known to us. Clear? How we are going to do that? Let's find out. First, what we'll do is, let's take the point P as H comma K, it's locus I have to find out. If I have to write equation of tangent, first of all, the question is, which form of tangent should we consider? Well, since they have given us information about the sum of slopes, that is M1 plus M2 is equal to lambda, we are definitely going to assume the slope form of tangent, isn't it? And what is the slope? I know that you remember that formula. What is it? It's y is equal to mx plus minus root over a square m square plus b square. Very well. Now, now we'll pass this tangent to the point through the point p. So when I substitute my point p coordinates in this equation of tangent, you have to remember in place of y, I have to put k. In place of x, I have to put h, right? So this can be written as k minus mh. I'm taking the m into x part on the left hand side is equal to plus minus root over a square m square plus b square. Is this clear what we have done? We have substituted point p coordinate in this equation of tangent. Now guys you can clearly see if I do the squaring here I am going to get a quadratic in m. Isn't it? And what will be the roots for that? Well, the roots will be m1 and m2 only because from p point we have drawn two tangents of slopes m1 and m2 as we have seen in the figure, right? So quickly what we are doing here, we are doing the squaring to get the quadratic in m and this is a simple one. You can start solving now. So on squaring, what we are going to get, it's going to become k square plus m square h square minus 2mhk, isn't it? And on right hand side, what am I going to get? a square m square plus b square, isn't it? So this will be the condition obtained after squaring. And now we'll take all the terms to one side. So when we do that, we'll get m square multiplied by h square minus a square minus 2mhk plus k square minus b square is equal to 0 and what we have seen that this quadratic has a slopes m1 and m2, isn't it? So I have an equation whose roots are m1 and m2 and I know some of those roots, right? They have given us m1 plus m2 is equal to lambda. So that means I have to apply the sum of roots of this quadratic. And what is the sum of roots formula? It's minus b by a, isn't it? So I can directly say that my m1 plus m2 which is lambda will be equal to twice of hk divided by h square minus a square and when I cross multiply you know to write the final answer h has to be replaced by x and k has to be replaced by y. So when I do that it's going to become something like this lambda times of x square minus a square is equal to 2xy. This will be the final locus of point of intersection of tangents. Have you understood the question? What they have given us the information m1 plus m2 is equal to lambda and we have used that information by assuming slow form of tangent. Then we have done squaring and obtained a quadratic whose roots are going to be m1 and m2. And then finally we have applied the condition for sum of roots to get the final answer. Understood? Very well. If we see the options here, we can say that D is going to be the right answer. Moving further, what they have said here is, if the line x plus y is equal to 3 is tangent to the ellipse whose foci are given 4 comma 3 and 6 comma k and this line is tangent to the ellipse at point 1 comma 2, then what is the value of k they have asked? Now guys, let's quickly plot the figure. Let us assume this is an ellipse and the foci are given to us. There are two foci. One is 4 comma 3 and another is 6 comma k. And the line x plus y is equal to 3 is tangent at let us say a point P which is 1 comma 2. Now what? 
if I join these foci, let us say the foci I am taking as B and A here. If I join these foci to the point P, I know that line T is a tangent. Which property can be used here to get the value of K? Well, you have read that property. It is known as the reflection property. What is the reflection property? Well, the reflection property says that if a ray is passing through one focus, it gets reflected by the ellipse and then passes through the another focus. And it was also told to you that my tangent is basically the bisector, isn't it? That means this angle theta and this angle theta will be same. Tangent will be external bisector of my angle APB. Is this clear? Okay. So, this is the property which I am talking about. Now what? Well, since this angle theta we have made same, what I can say from here is that if I take image of point B about the tangent line, it's going to lie virtually on AP. Right? This property, you know, image of B about the tangent line has to lie on AP or the incident ray if we talk about. Clear? Okay. Now, to get my value of k, what am I going to do is, I am going to find image of point B about the line and we know the formula for that. What is the formula? Well, you know the image formula which you have already learned in straight lines. It's x minus x1 is 4 divided by coefficient of x in the line is 1 is equal to y minus y1 is 3 divided by coefficient of x in the Sorry, coefficient of y in the line, that is again 1, is equal to minus 2 i is off. We'll put the coordinate of point B in the equation of tangent. So, it's going to become 4 plus 3 minus 3 divided by a squared plus b squared, that is 2. This is going to finally come out as minus 4. Understood till here? Okay, very well. So, if I equate the x part, I can say that my x value is going to come out as 0. That means my b dash x coordinate is 0. Right? And similarly, if I equate the y part here, I am going to get the y value as minus 1. That means my b dash y coordinate is 0 comma minus 1. Now, I have got the image. Now, further which condition should I apply? I have to make A and my point P and my point B dash as collinear and you can always equate the slope, isn't it? So, what am I going to do is I am going to write slope of P B dash is equal to my slope of A B dash and that is going to give me the value of K. So, guys, start solving and let's see what the value of K comes out as. So, my slope of P B dash is nothing but y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So, that's going to become 2 plus 1. That's going to become 2 plus 1 divided by 1 is equal to a b dash will be k plus 1 divided by 6. So, from here k value is equal to 18 minus 1 that is 17. This will become the final answer. And if we look at the options here, we can say that b will be the right one. Have you understood guys? Very well. Well, in this question what they have said that normal at four points x1 comma y1, x2 comma y2, x3 comma y3 and x4 comma y4 on the ellipse the standard equation is given to us x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1 b concurrent at some point. Now, if all the normals are concurrent at some point, they are known as co-normal point. Co-normal point is the point where all the normals are intersecting. Then, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 multiplied by 1 by x1 plus 1 by x2 plus 1 by x3 plus 1 by x4. This long value they have asked in the question, but don't worry. We'll just simplify it and you'll get the answer quickly. What we are going to do that do here is we are assuming let us say a ellipse is something like this and from a point we have drawn four normals right now this point I am taking as my point h comma k from this point I have drawn four normals clear okay very well now well now what we are going to do is first I am going to assume equation of normal in 
some parametric form. Let's take one parameter as theta. If I take that, I can say that equation of normal in parametric form is nothing but ax by cos theta minus by by sin theta is equal to a square minus b square. Isn't it? You know that formula, right? Okay, so equation of normal is known to me. Now, what am I going to do is, I have to just put my point h comma k in this. And I don't want to write this a square minus b square again and again. So, I'm taking that as lambda. Clear? So, when I substitute my point h comma k in this equation of normal, I'm going to get a h by cos theta minus b k by sin theta is equal to lambda. Why we are doing that? Because what they have asked, sum of x coordinate and then their reciprocals and the sum of it. That means I have to obtain a condition where I can get some of these values. And for that, from here, what am I going to do is, I'm going to write this as h by cos theta minus lambda is equal to bk by sine theta. And now I'm just cross multiplying and taking the LCM. So it's going to give me h minus lambda cos theta multiplied by sine theta is equal to bk into cos theta. Clear? Now, listen very carefully. I'm going to square this and sine square theta I'm going to write as 1 minus cos square theta. Clear? So, now we are going to do squaring. So, when we do squaring, we'll get something like this. I've already told you sine square theta can be written as 1 minus cos square theta. Now, I'm going to expand this first bracket. It's a minus b whole square. You know the formula. It's a square plus b square minus 2ab. Right? So, when I do the squaring here, I'm going to get this relation. a square plus b square minus 2b, 2ab and rest of the terms are same. Now, what we have obtained? We have obtained a degree 4 equation in cos theta. Yes, it's a degree 4 equation in cos theta. And now, actually, you have to just multiply all the terms here. So, how we are going to do that? Lambda cos square theta into cos square theta. That's going to become lambda cos square. Sorry, lambda square cos theta raised to 4. Then I'll have one more term that is plus 2ah lambda cos cube theta when I multiply these two terms. Clear? Okay. Now, now we'll collect the terms of cos square theta. So, lambda cos square theta into 1 is going to give me cos square theta coefficient as lambda square. Then I'll have one more term when a square h square is multiplied by minus cos square theta. So, that is going to be minus of a square h square. And on the right hand side, I have b square k square cos square theta, which I bring when to left hand side, it's going to become minus b square k square. This is the coefficient of cos square theta. Then comes the next term that is cos theta. So for cos theta, what I have to do? Well, I have to just multiply minus 2h lambda cos theta with 1. So that is going to give me minus 2h lambda cos theta. And left as the constant term, which is nothing but plus a square h square when a square h square is multiplied by 1. Clear? Is equal to 0. This is a degree 4 equation in cos theta. And when I multiply this entire equation by minus sign, it's going to look something like this. I've just expanded it, okay? So you have to expand and obtain this degree 4 equation. Now, guys. Since this is a degree 4 equation, what that means, that this is going to give me 4 values of cos theta. So, I can take my 4 eccentric angles as alpha, beta, gamma and delta. So, this equation is going to give me roots cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma and cos delta. Right? These are the 4 roots of this equation. And why we are writing that? Because... What they have asked here is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. You know the x coordinate is nothing but a cos theta. Isn't it? This is the x coordinate of any point. So, the summation of all the values is going to become a times of summation cos alpha. That is cos alpha plus cos beta plus cos gamma plus cos delta. Clear? Coming to the next bracket, it's 1 by x1 summation. That will become summation of 1 by a 
अगेन इट्स कॉस अल्फा प्लस वन बाय कॉस बीटा प्लस वन बाय कॉस गामा और वन बाय कॉस डेल्टा ए आई एम टेकिंग कॉमन एंड यू कैन सी दैट ए इज गोइंग टू गेट कैंसल्ड आउट क्लियर चल हो ओके नाउ द फर्स्ट टर्म इज नथिंग बट सम ऑफ रूट्स एंड द सेकंड टर्म सपोज इफ आई वांट टू एक्सपैंड इट्स लुक इट विल लुक समथिंग लाइक दिस वन बाय कॉस अल्फा प्लस वन बाय कॉस बीटा प्लस वन बाय कॉस गामा एंड प्लस वन बाय कॉस डेल्टा राइट and now if i take the lcm it's going to become something like cos alpha cos beta cos gamma plus cos alpha cos gamma cos delta plus cos alpha cos beta cos delta and one more term is going to come that is cos beta cos gamma and cos delta whole divided by cos alpha cos beta cos gamma and cos delta and guys what is this referring to well this first term is nothing but sum of roots so if i have this as my degree 4 equation what is the sum of roots formula well it is minus of b by a isn't it so that is going to become 2 ah lambda divided by lambda square right this is my coefficient of cos cube theta divided by coefficient of cos theta raised to 4 clear very well coming to the second bracket this sorry this first term when i cancel lambda from here it's going to give me 2 ah by lambda as the final value similarly the second bracket is in deno sorry in numerator what i have sum taken three at a time right three three terms are there and they have taken the sum and that is equal to coefficient of cos theta with a minus sign divided by coefficient of cos theta raised to 4 right so that is going to become minus of 2 ah lambda divided by lambda square now again one lambda is going to get cancelled out so what is this going to become Minus two h lambda, and in denominator I have product of roots, so that is going to become one by. And what is the product of roots? Well, here it is my constant divided by again the coefficient of cos theta raised to four, so that is minus a square h square divided by lambda square. This lambda square I'm going to write in the numerator part. Now, when you see actually terms are getting cancelled out here. you can say that ah ah a square h square is getting cancelled out minus minus is becoming plus and lambda lambda and lambda square is also getting cancelled out and finally left us 2 into 2 that is 4 will become the final answer so have you understood what we have done to get the summation of x coordinate and also their reciprocal part we have obtained a degree 4 equation in cos theta and then we have applied sum of roots sum taken three at a time and product of roots to get the final answer understood very well and if we see the options here we can say that a is going to be the right answer clear perfect well moving further what they have said here is a series of concentric ellipses concentric ellipses means their center is going to be same e1 e2 till en are drawn such that en touches the extremities of major axis of en minus 1 and foci of en coincide with the extremities of minor axis of en minus 1 now what the further said is that eccentricities of ellipse are independent of n that means eccentricity for all the ellipses is same what is the value of eccentricity is what they have asked so this is a long question but again we'll plot the figure first what they have said here is that we have ellipse e1 which is touching the extremities of major axis of en minus 1 so let us say i have my en minus 1 like this right then i have an ellipse en which is touching its extremities of major axis and foci of en is, is coinciding with extremities of minor axis of en minus 1 so my en ellipse will look something like this right this sorry my en will look something like this and my foci of en will basically become the minor axis extremities for en minus 1 this will be the figure clear okay 
So, if this is the figure, we have the eccentric, sorry, we have the equation of ellipses, let's say something like this. For en, we have taken the general equation or the standard equation as x squared by an squared plus y squared by bn squared is equal to 1. And for en minus 1, we are taking it as x squared by an minus 1 whole square plus y squared by bn minus 1 whole square is equal to 1. What they have given foci coincide with the minor axis extremity of en minus 1. Okay. So, one thing is clear that this distance for en minus 1 will be an minus 1 and for en will be an. So, these two has to be equal, right? And foci are coinciding, that means for my en minus 1, this is nothing but bn minus 1. But for my en, this distance is basically distance of center from the foci that is bn multiplied by the eccentricity e. So, I'll have one more relation that bn minus 1 is equal to bn into e. Have you understood both the relations? Very well. So, these are the relations which they have already given to us. I mean, we have inferred by the information which they have given. And now I have to find the eccentricity. For that, we'll use the formula of eccentricity for both. For the first ellipse, that is, say, uh, that is for E and I can say that my eccentricity is root over 1 minus. Now, guys, this is a vertical ellipse, right? So, that is going to be 1 minus A n square by B n square. But for en minus 1, we know that it is a horizontal ellipse. So, this will be equal to root over 1 minus bn minus 1 whole square by an minus 1 whole square. Clear till here? One, we have used en for vertical. Another eccentricity formula is coming for horizontal. Clear? Very well. So, we'll have this eccentricity formula also with us. Now, well, now we'll just eliminate a and b and a and minus 1 and b and minus 1 and get the eccentricity. How? Let's find out. In the first part, I'm doing squaring here on both the sides. So, it's going to give me e square is equal to 1 minus a n square by b n square. So, from here, I can say that my a n by b n whole square is nothing but 1 minus e square. Right? Let me take this as 1. Now, similarly, I am equating second and third and doing the squaring. So, when I do that, it's going to become 1 minus an by bn whole square is equal to 1 minus. In place of bn minus 1, I am putting bn into e. And similarly, in place of an minus 1, I am putting an. So, it's going to become bn square e square by a n square, right? Okay, this 1 is definitely going to get cancelled out. And if I cross multiply, I'm going to get a n by b n whole square and again square is equal to e square. And if I take the square root here, I'm going to get that a n by b n whole square is nothing but equal to e, right? Okay, let me take this as my second equation. And by first and second, we can just equate the values of a n square by b n square. So, from here, I can say by 1 and 2 that 1 minus e square should be equal to e. And the quadratic in e is nothing but e square plus e minus 1 is equal to 0. Is this much clear? Very well. Now, you can really solve the quadratic and tell me the answer. Quickly, solve it. What are we getting, guys? Well, it's going to be e is equal to minus 1 plus minus root 5 by 2, right? We know the quadratic formula. But here, which value have I have, which value do I have to accept? The positive one, that's correct. Because eccentricity cannot be negative. So, I can say the final answer which I'm going to accept is only e is equal to root 5 minus 1 by 2. This will be the answer for this question. Have you understood? A simple method, isn't it? Very well. So, if we see the options here, we can see that B is going to be the right answer. Understood? Perfect.